Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike Foster Outdoors. Um, today I wanted to share with everybody something that I do every year before the upcoming season. Um, I always bring all my baits in, go through everything, um, try to get them reorganized, make sure the hardware is good, make, make sure your hooks are good and sharp, not rusted. Um, in this video I have a little tip about how to make your hooks last a little longer and your baits and stuff not getting rusted up um but after a season of fishing everything seems to get all jumbled back up and not only that it will refresh your mind um if you have a lot of bait you know maybe you had some baits that were sitting off in a uh, compartment somewhere that you didn't even realize you'd had because you hadn't thrown them in so long maybe like specialty uh bait so anyways we're going to get into this and I'll show you what I like to do to help myself be more prepared, which means more fish in the boat when you're out on the water. Hey guys, I just wanted to show you this cool table real quick. Um, this table is made out of barn wood, and this was made by Jesse Gibbs from Rustic Expressions. You can find him on Facebook, and I'll put a link down in the video description. But this table has some wood in it that's like 120 years old. Pretty cool. But we're going to be tinkering with these baits right here shortly. Alright guys, this first box here, I've already been through it. Um, got it reorganized to some extent. But you guys all know what a jumbled up crankbait box looks like. These are some of my medium diving crankbaits um so i got like some 5xds and i got some series three just different things like that here some bombers but anyways i always go through and make sure all my hooks are good here's a little lucky craft you want to make sure you don't have any rust on your hooks because rust left behind on one hook it just seems like it gets on everything and then it just keeps going and I know no matter what you try you're going to end up getting some kind of rust in your boxes <clears throat> here's a cool little custom painted one I got just the other day um, but anyways what I do once I go through kind of organize as you can see I got kind of collars together to some extent uh, here's like my shad stuff and <clears throat> but I always try first and foremost I go through check all the hooks if I got bad hooks you got your snap ring pliers and I'm just gonna change one of these hooks out to show you guys how easy it is you got some good pliers I got my box of hooks right here Let's see here. Let's switch one out on the back of this Berkeley right here. So, all you got to do, you got good split ring pliers. Sometimes you can use your fingernails, but I don't have any fingernails right now. Get that separated. Get your hook started. So now you have that opened up. Get your new hook started on there. Go a little farther with that one. Got your new hook started on there. And then you just twist with your snap ring pliers these pliers i have are just kvd snap ring pliers i think you can get them at walmart or wherever but they're pretty good so there you have it you got a brand new fresh hook on there no rust and sticky sticky as it can be but i pretty much do that i just go through all my baits 
<clears throat> and make sure that those hooks are sharp. That's real important. And then secondly, make sure they don't have rust. And then um, secondly, what I do is I ordered these online and all they are is like little silica packets. Uh, you know, like you've probably gotten them before in some things that you've bought. But these little packets here, this bag here had 200 of these little, I think they're one gram silica gel packets. I think I gave 10 bucks for this. So I take those, and you might already be able to see some in here. I've already spotted them. Just switch them out, you know, at the end of the season, they tend, they lasted, the last couple years I've been doing it, they've lasted a full season. And, uh, big time kept the rust factor down in my boxes. Um, you're still going to get a little bit of rust, especially if you're like me and have an old boat where the lockers aren't really watertight. And my boat's stored outside in a building that gets hot and cold, it's not heated. Um, if you got a place where your boat stays inside and it's heated and stuff, then you probably don't have the issues of rust like me. But, uh, I just put one of those in every, every little spot. And, like I said, 200, 200 of these for 10 bucks. And they make bigger packs. So, hopefully, uh, this might help you guys out and it says on the back of the package that you can put them in the microwave or the oven and it takes some moisture back out of them and you can reuse them so really with 200 that should be enough to cover everything if you want to do that microwave deal and dry them back out all right let's go to this other box here I like these watertight Plano boxes of 3700 size. I got some of the regular size and then I got several of the deep. I just, you can see what's going on with these packets a little bit better in this one. Uh, this box here is all my PH Custom Lures balsa baits. And they, uh, Actually, I went fishing yesterday, and I took this off a pole. It doesn't go in here. But that right there, that skinny pea and the nasty collar, I had some good luck on, <clears throat> excuse me, I had some good luck on that yesterday. PH makes some pretty nice baits, but uh, anyways, guys, I hope this helps some of you out. You guys can save a, save some money on rebuying baits because nothing's cheap. Alright guys, I hope that helped give some of you an idea on maybe how to cut down on rust. Uh, get a little organized. And uh, those silica packets are very inexpensive. That's the price of like half the price of one crankbait nowadays on some of these higher end crankbaits. So anyways, thanks for stopping by. Hope you guys enjoyed a little tip video. Till next time, tight lines.